Hello everybody, it's Ken Faulkner coming to you with another knife video, you guessed it. Um, this one is uh, a group of knives that uh, are kind of special in, in that they're this category that I, I felt like I had to get. I had to have them. Uh, uh, you know, when I really started getting into collecting, yeah, mostly it had to do with YouTube videos. But um, I watch it. I'd watch like uh, Blade HQ's videos, uh, and they'd be showing all the new knives coming in. They'd be talking about knives, and it would just they would talk about these knives as if they just are the most amazing thing you've ever you can ever imagine, and uh, you got to have one. So uh, I see this group of knives as being. Um, for me, FOMO knives. When I say FOMO, I'm mean, I'm talking about fear of missing out. And I didn't want to be that knife collector out there that didn't know what they were talking about when they said how great these things are. So, let's get into it. Um, I got the first one here. Should be pretty familiar to, to, to most people. This one here was uh, a very reasonably priced knife very uh, budget friendly and therefore um, I think that a lot of people who don't want to spend as much as some of these knives may cost uh, would be willing to get this one because it's it's a good quality knife and that's that's the thing that you hear all the time you also hear uh, Bees Blade saying you got to have a penguin so this is the QSP penguin I got this one kind of early on they've come out with a bunch of different styles different uh, um, scales. Um, I think they have, you know, different sizes. This is just the basic one in D2, but it's got that great sheep's foot, uh, blade, which is really a great, uh, is a great shape for a knife, especially in this size range. It's got, uh, the micarta. I, I don't know if this is the denim micarta. It's kind of a little dark over time just for me uh, using it. But uh, anyway, great little knife. I mean, solid. It's really a good design. And um, yeah, I'd recommend it to anybody. I mean, you know, no matter what your price range is, uh, it's a good knife. If if you like more expensive knives, you can just leave this one around just to use it, you know, just to put it somewhere where you might just need a knife that you can just not worry about doing any damage with because it's it's such a reasonable price. So that's the first one. The QSP Penguin. Next one, uh, this one is uh, super popular. So many designs, so many different styles. This is uh, came in a little bit uh, later on because it has the Caborsha wood. So it's a Vivi. It's uh, this one is the Elementum, and again, it's that size range. Uh, maybe a little more expensive than your uh your penguin but it's still a decent price i mean civivi is the budget brand for we um you can go to sin cut for even cheaper ones but but this knife uh for the price definitely a good quality knife i like this wood i like wood handles i think it's really nice i think the wood with the black looks really great and it's a drop point which is really um probably one of my favorite blade shapes Drop point, spear point. This is kind of droppy, but it's close to a spear point. And I really like this kind of shape myself, personally, for my collection. And uh, it's another one. I think this one is also D2. Keep that budget price range. But it's a good knife, good quality. And it's just one of those ones that you see a lot of people talk about. And the company has come out with so many different styles. You can tell. It's super popular. Next one is I think everybody's heard of this one. There's a little bit of a little bit of opinions about it, um, but you definitely have heard of it. This one, although it's been modified a bit, is the Benchmade Bug Out, and that's the one that normally comes with the uh, the FRN handles. And this one, uh, I got. I picked these guys up later on. I'd had it with the FRN handles for a long time. 
very lightweight knife, uh, very easy to carry, put it in your gym shorts, and uh, it just, you know, it's a good quality knife, lightweight, you're not going to do anything super heavy with it, and uh, I went and switched out to uh, these uh, G10 um, titanium handles, made a huge difference because of the, how solid it is, doesn't really squeeze in like it did with the, with the more plasticky type handles and uh it's a pretty good knife still thin blade stock really thin still lightweight so it still has all those different properties but it's just much more solid the contouring on this is a little bit better the way it uh kind of it kind of sinks in around the the axis lock uh and then a little bit thicker out here just makes it a little bit more solid uh just a nice nice shape to the handle flitanium does an excellent job with their uh with their scales so there it is, the Benchmade Bug Out. Now this one, next one, uh, definitely probably have heard of it. Most people have. Uh, this is the Protec Malibu. And this one was one that came out back when I kind of first started collecting seriously um, pocket knives, modern pocket knives. And it was just really hard to find. I think it still is kind of hard to get a hold of one of these things. They sell out so fast, and that's that kind of shows you that that's just this is one of those knives that everybody's trying to get, even though it's a um, you know a a company that that does production knives and makes you know plenty of knives. It's still kind of hard to get a hold of. This is the one that I got from uh, from Blade Show, my first Blade Show I went to back in 2021. So. A little special because of that. I like the whole murdered out all black design. It's got the mosaic pin, which is kind of cool little style on it. And I picked this guy up. It was a high price for me to pay at that time. But since I was at Blade Show for the first time, I felt like I could blow a little bit of that budget that I had and go for that premium knife. So that one is the Protec Malibu. Button lock, nice action. Good quality knife. Next one is from Spyderco. Now this wasn't my first Spyderco I got. I actually picked up a Tenacious before this. The Tenacious is uh, definitely a, a, a lower cost knife. Somewhere around $50-ish if you get the basic one. Uh, but this PM2, Paramilitary 2, is definitely um, a little bit more expensive fairly easy to get. I mean, they have so many of these. Again, different types of uh, steels. Uh, this one is in the, um, I think it's the S45BN, made in USA. Um, Protec is made in USA. The rest of these guys are made in China. But this one is made in USA, and it is the CPM S45VN steel, which is a great steel. But they also make these in different different steels. Just because Spyderco is like that, they have a lot of different uh, quality steels they use, and they always do excellent heat treat. Um, I really love the the shapes, the shape of the uh, Spyderco blades, so it doesn't bother me at all. I know some people say it's uh, it's weird looking, it's ugly, whatever. I love it. It's a great blade, very easy to use, very slicey. Great feel in the hand, wonderful knife. And then the last one here at the table is one that, because uh, I was looking at the Bitch Made Griptilian for a long time, was thinking about that one, was Super Freak, some of those knives, but I kept hearing about this Ritter Hogue. A lot of people talking about it, saying that it may be even better than the Griptilian. But very much the same design. And then um, last year when we did that, uh, was it 48 hours uh, for knife rights? I heard Doug talking about how, you know, he is able to do what he does for knife rights because he sells these knives. And that kind of just kind of put me over the edge because I'd been thinking about it for a long time, heard so much about it. I decided that night I went ahead and, and ordered it. They finally uh, told me where I could go. I forget what the name of the company is. Uh, maybe I'll put it in the comments. Uh, there's a knife company that he sells these through, and um, yeah, so I picked this one up. Great action. It's got the access style lock, more of a, uh, you know, it's a Hogue version of it.
great blade, uh, very, very grippy G10, and uh, interesting pattern to it. Some people don't like the purple color. I'm okay with some color, no problem there. And so that is the Ritter Hogue. And this one is the one I had in the thumbnail for the video. This is one I've been thinking about for a long time. So I'm gonna do a quick unboxing. Which knife to use? I'll use the Penguin. Should cut this open really easy. This knife is something that I've had, you can see what it says there. Edge of a legend. And it is a legendary knife. It's from Buck. It's some something that um, I've wanted for a long, long, long time, but just never pulled the trigger. And I knew I was going to do this video, so I said to myself, I'm going to actually spend some money, buy a knife for the channel. And this is the first time I've actually done that. I've spent money on like a camera stand for my phone, that kind of thing, but I never actually bought a knife specifically for the channel. So that's what I did here. So I'm going to get these other knives moved up and we're going to do this unboxing really quick here because um, everybody knows this knife i think most most everybody knows this knife so you don't really need to talk about it much this is my first actual experience handling it but uh, this is the tried and true buck 110 isn't that a beauty so nice and my fingerprints on it already it is just a awesome little lockback, just a classic style, and I'm really surprised I didn't buy one of these before now. It just I've, for whatever reason, maybe you have knives like that where you've been thinking about it, but you just don't do it, and you think about it, but there's something else, and so I finally did it. Even went to Amazon, got that quick delivery, so I can go ahead and do this video and show this guy off to you guys. It's got the buck information here. Famous forever warranty. I'll have to check that out, read that. But it's just one of those companies. Now, I don't know if this one is USA made. It's got this, uh, this belt um, pouch. That's just the traditional. And I don't know if it's USA. Oh, here you go. Made in the USA. You got to like that. So anyway, great knife. I'm really looking forward to carrying this quite a bit, using it. Nice solid knife. I mean, I think I can really do a lot with this thing. So anyway, so now I got another FOMO knife taken care of, checked off my list. There are some other ones. I, I still don't have an Ontario Wrap 1. And that's something everybody has, everybody talks about. I got the two, but I don't have the one. A couple of knives out there. There's other knives that uh, I've been thinking about but haven't done yet, but uh, we'll see. Over time, I might be picking them up. So anyway, thanks for watching. Thanks for everybody that comments on the videos. You guys are awesome. Uh, you make it all worthwhile to, to take the time to do these videos. Um, and uh, let me know if you got knives, if you have knife FOMO, if you have knives that you bought because of it. If you have ones that you've been wanting to get, but you just haven't got, uh, let me know in the comments. All right. Hey, you guys, have a good day, and we'll see you later. Bye.